So this, here she is. She, they finally, you know, the, the black people in the uh, courtroom really are mad at her and they want to do terrible things. And there are some white women who are, um, you know, sympathetic. And then Janie just gets up when they call her and put her in the chair. And she says, they all leaned over to listen while she talked. First thing she had to remember was that she was not at home. She was in the courthouse fighting something and it wasn't death. It was worse than, that, worse than that. It was lying thoughts. It was lying thoughts. She had to go way back to let them know how she and Tea Cake had been with one another so they could see she could never shoot Tea Cake out of malice. She tried to make them see how terrible it was that things were fixed so that Tea Cake couldn't come back to himself until he had got rid of that mad dog that was in him and he couldn't get rid of the mad dog and live. He had to die to get rid of the dog, but she hadn't wanted to kill him. A man is up against a hard game when he must die to beat it. She made them see how she couldn't ever want to be rid of him. She didn't plead to anybody. She just sat there and told, and when she was through, she hushed. She had been through for some time before the judge and the lawyer and the rest seemed to know it. But she sat on in that trial chair until the lawyer told her she could come down. So then she, you know, they, they found her not guilty of, of murder. Mm -hmm. So she was free, and the judge and everybody up there smiled with her and shook her hand. And the white women cried and stood around her like a protecting wall. And the Negroes, with heads hung down, shuffled out and away. The sun was almost down. And Janie had seen the sun rise on her troubled love, and then she had shot tea cake and had been in jail and had been tried for her life, and now she was free. Nothing to do with the little that was left of the day, but to visit the kind white friends who had realized her feelings and thank them. So the sun went down. Janie buried tea cake in Palm Beach. She knew he loved the glades, but it was too low for him to lie with water, maybe washing over him with every heavy rain. Anyway, the glades and its waters had killed him. She wanted him out of the way of storms, so she had a strong vault built in the cemetery at West Palm Beach. Janie had wired to Orlando for money to put him away. Tea cake was the sun of evening sun, and nothing was too good. The undertaker did a handsome job, and Tea Cake slept royally on his white silken couch among the roses she had bought. He looked almost ready to grin. Janie bought him a brand new guitar and put it in his hands. He would be thinking up new songs to play to her when she got there. Sop and his friends had tried to hurt her, but she knew it was because they loved Tea Cake and didn't understand. So she sent Sop word and to all the others through him. So the day of the funeral, they came with shame and apology in their faces. They wanted her quick forgetfulness. So they filled up and overflowed the 10 sedans that Janie had hired and added others to the line. Then the band played and Tea Cake rode like a pharaoh to his tomb. No expensive veils and robes for Janie this time. She went on in her overalls. She was too busy feeling grief to dress like grief. And then the last part, she had come back and gone back to her house and closed her gate and gone upstairs. Soon everything around downstairs was shut and fastened. Janie mounted the stairs with her lamp. The light in her hand was like a spark of sun stuff washing her face in fire. Her shadow behind fell black and headlong down the stairs. Now in her room, the place tasted fresh again. The wind through the open windows had broomed out all the fetid feeling of absence and nothingness. She closed in and sat down, combing road dust out of her hair, thinking. The day of the gun and the bloody body and the courthouse came and commenced to sing a sobbing sigh 
out of every corner in the room, out of each and every chair and thing, commenced to sing, commenced to sob and sigh, singing and sobbing. Then tea cake came prancing around her where she was, and the song of the sigh flew out of the window and lit in the top of the pine trees. Tea cake with the sun for a shawl. Of course he wasn't dead. He could never be dead until she herself had finished feeling and thinking. The kiss of his memory made pictures of love and light against the wall. Here was peace. She pulled in her horizon like a great fishnet, pulled it from around the waist of the world and draped it over her shoulder. So much of life in its meshes. She called in her soul. She called in her soul, her soul, to come and see. <laughs>